What's happening everyone? Thanks for tuning in to KMRD Radio Stuff. My name is Mike. If you're new to the channel or haven't already, hit that subscribe button. You'll be happy you did. Guys, today we are going to be taking a look at a mobile screwdriver antenna, specifically this Yesu ATAS or ATAS or however the heck you want to say it. Active Tuning Antenna System is what it stands for. And uh, this is just about the easiest antenna you can set up. It does 40 meters through 70 centimeters actually. So if you have uh, one of the older Yesu uh, HF radios, like the, uh, what is it, the 857 or the 897 I believe it is. Also says it works for the 450. Any Yesu radio that has the uh, ATOS setting inside of it, uh, I know it did uh, say the 450 as well. So uh, this thing is freaking awesome. We're gonna get on the air a little bit later and I'll show you how cool this thing is. Easiest antenna to set up, all you do is you literally screw this into the mount. We're using a Diamond K400 mount. Uh, couldn't be any easier. It's got a uh, S, it's got a PL259 on the inside of this and the, uh, the mount is a SO239 and then you literally just screw the coaxial cable into your radio and you're hooked up. The power goes through the coax, no other power wires at all. So we're gonna do an in-depth look. I wanna show you how to set this up on the, uh, we're gonna use my 891. I'm gonna show you how to set it up. We'll show you how to tune it, show you some, uh, a, a common problem that I ran into and how to fix that. And uh, we'll go inside, we'll take a look, we'll tear this apart, look at the guts. And then at the end, we'll uh, go to the park, hop on the air and see how many contacts we can make. Spoiler alert, this antenna is freaking awesome. I recommend it. So just stop watching the video now and just go buy it. But <laughs> let's, uh, without any further ado, let's hop in the car and I'll show you how to set this thing up. I do wanna add one note before we hop in the car. A lot of the forums, a lot of people I've talked to say you gotta really have a good grounding and bonding system with this. I've done zero grounding and bonding with uh, this mount. This is typically where my Tar Heel goes. Nothing, no ground, no bond, nothing. I, I scraped away a little of the paint on the underside of this just to get a little better connection. That's it. Oh, and before I forget, I gotta give a huge thank you to my friend Sideboom for letting me borrow his antenna so we could take a look at this. We just got down. All right, setup of this thing, pretty easy. We're gonna hold down our function button and we're gonna scroll to menu, what is it, 512, I believe. Uh, 512, yep, to ATOS setting. We're gonna click our function button and we're gonna hit enable. Now in true Yesu fashion where uh, there is no logic to their menu systems, we also have to go way the heck down to menu 1615 to tuner select. Push our multi-select knob and change that to ATOS. So you have external ATOS and lamp, select ATOS. Now we can get out of here. Now we have this ATS uh, button there, that's a good thing. So now we're gonna short press our function button and we can simply hit tuner and it's good. If you long press one of these buttons, you can save it as one of these multi-function buttons. And that's it, we're ready to get on the air. So now I'm already tuned up on 20 meters, so let's go over to 40 meters. All we have to do, because I've saved this, uh, I can either hit this uh, B button because it's on tuner. If you haven't saved that, you can just simply press the multi-function knob there, but since I saved it, we'll do it that way. Push that button, high SWR, that's a good thing because we're not tuned on 40 right now and the ATS button or light is blinking, and you can see the antenna is raising right now. And just like that, we've got a match. Now, one thing about this, if you don't have a perfect match, uh, you can go in here. I don't really care for this way of doing it, but you can use your multi knob, and there's these up down arrows, which uh, oddly enough, the up makes it go down and the down makes it go up, so you can actually just push the button and it'll go up or down, push the multifunction button that, uh, button that is. Or you can press the PTT and with the up or down button, you can kind of fine tune it there. So we can see a little under 1.5 to one we got there on 40 meters. And if we want, we can go back to 20 meters, hit tune again. Now we can see the antenna is going down and as soon as it finds a match, the SWR will just start slowly going down, just like that. Done and done. So incredibly easy. And let's say maybe we wanna go up to uh, 10 meters, let's say. 
There we are, push our tune. The antenna's going down. Super easy. What did we get on that? At 1.2, 1.3. It comes, it, it, it matches everything. Let's go, uh, let's try 12 meters. Didn't say anything about 12 meters in the manual. But sure enough, just tune 12. Let's do uh, the whole gamut here. Here's 15. Good match on 15. Here's 17. This thing's awesome. Uh, let's check 30. Good match there. Now it won't go to 80, but I'm gonna I'm gonna tune it to 80, and I'm gonna show you a problem that this antenna has, and I'm gonna show you how to solve it. Because I got frustrated when I initially started reviewing this antenna months ago. This light would blink and nothing ever happened. Now we can hear this. So I'm gonna key up or do something to get it to stop. <laughs> Push tuner. <laughs> Something's horribly wrong, okay? And basically the antenna kind of doesn't know where it was and this is coming from the Yesu rep at one of the ham uh, conventions I was at this year. I was chatting with him for quite a bit about this antenna. Now, if we go back, this antenna does not tune 80, but I just tried to make it, make it tune 80. If for some reason this antenna gets stuck, so let's go back up to 20 meters, okay? It's gonna tune like it, it looks like it's tuning this ATS button or light is flashing, but there's no high SWR here. The antenna is not going down right now. It looks like it's broken. It sounds like it's broken. What's happening is because from, from what I was told from a Yesu representative, the antenna is not the smartest antenna in the world and it doesn't really know where it is. So it has to go through this cycle and if you just wait, if you give it about a minute, it's gonna catch up with itself. And it's basically like, where's the antenna? It's so like the sensors are going up and down. And after a second, after a minute, if you just kind of let it do its thing, just keep letting it tune, that ATS button's blinking, Eventually, it's going to kick into gear. The antenna is going to start lowering and it's going to start tuning. And this drove me nuts. I thought it was broken. I'm like, so this is probably why a lot of people say you got to really have a really good grounding and bonding for this antenna to work. And now here we are. Didn't touch anything. It's just all of a sudden working. Now the antenna is going down and it's tuning itself. And it works. So if you get stuck in that problem where it doesn't look like it's tuning, just wait a minute. Like, give it a good solid minute, like 60 seconds. Now we're back. The antenna knows where it is again. We can change around. It's tuning, no problem. Life is good. Just like that. Beautiful. So let's take a look at the actual antenna. Here we are in its collapsed form. Uh, the, the base of the antenna is about 21 inches long and oh roughly probably an inch and three-eighths wide at its widest part there so not very big and then you have this stainless steel uh, whip that is uh, just about 35 inches if i remember right i just measured it this when i initially saw this antenna i, I didn't think there was a way to remove this whip if something were to happen uh, to it but there actually is so I wanna show you how to tear this antenna down really quick. I'm gonna really highly edit this just to show you the parts. But before we do that, I need to run outside and actually fully extend this so uh, we can actually remove all the parts. So let me go do that and we'll be back. Maybe you need to replace this stinger if it bent or something. So what you have to do, there's a little rubber gasket here and you just kinda of pull it off. Okay, and that's gonna reveal two Allen screws. Now these are metric, so you get your metric hex key set out. We're gonna simply unscrew these all the way. And the other one. Now we can simply remove the whip. Notice there is some grease on there, so mind your fingers and set that aside or replace it, whatever. Now this whole outer assembly just slides off and that reveals, here's our coil. So it's, it's just a, I mean, it's a screwdriver antenna. It's just like any other, you know, Wolf River coils, Tar Heel, Scorpion. It's just a coil of wire, but it's motorized and it goes up and down. And uh, this is pretty well sealed. So I don't suspect you'd really ever need to honestly take this apart to clean it like what we're, uh, what we're showing here. But 
eh, for some reason you might need to disassemble it. So we also have a rubber gasket here. This part is the, uh, the guts of it, if you will. This gasket is a pain in the butt to take off. We might do this through the magic power of editing. There we are. So this slides up, reveals three Phillips screws so we can unscrew this. And very carefully, there's, a, there's an O-ring in here that kind of seats it. And there's these really fine wires. So you don't want to yank too hard lest we break this. We can unplug these wires. Okay, now we have basically the brain of the antenna. Here's the PL259 here at the base. Then we have uh, three screws here, one of which, note, is underneath this sticker. So you'll have to jab through the sticker to take that screw out. Underneath here, there's ball bearings, so don't unscrew those unless you really feel like losing ball bearings or having to put them back in. Ask me how I know. And then there's also three set screws in the middle of the tube here that we need to unscrew. And theoretically, slide this up and this should come out. I kind of don't feel like forcing that though, because this isn't mine. But if you wanted to take this whole thing out, you should just be able to slide it all out. I don't really see a reason to do that on camera and show me breaking this. But that's pretty much it. I'll leave a link to a website from Kilo Bravo 5 Whiskey India Alpha in the description below. And he shows all the steps to disassembling this. Just wanted to show you kind of what's inside of it. I don't know if you can see, but the wire is actually cut into whatever the center is there. So you don't have to worry about the, the wires moving. So uh, it's very nicely built. I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed with this. Now, can I put it back together? And reassembly is just doing the exact opposite. You're just screwing everything back together. And that's about it. So I can't really see the likelihood of you really needing to disassemble it this much. It is pretty sealed up from the weather, but should you need to, that's how you do it. So now we know how to set this antenna up. We know how to operate it with the radio. We know how to tear it down and clean it or maintain it. But none of that's gonna to amount to a can of Frank's beans unless we can make contacts with this thing. So let's run over to Huntsville State Park, see if we can get on the air with this. Thank you, Parks on the air. Thank you, Parks on the air from Kilo 8 Mike Romeo Delta in Huntsville State Park. Kilo 3019 calling Seeky Poda, Seeky Poda from Kilo 8 Mike Romeo Delta. Well, there's a bunch in there. We're going to have to go with Kilo Golf 2, Mike. Mike, what's up, Mike? Yeah, what's going on, buddy? I'm up in New York City. You're about a 5-1. 5-1 to me up here in New York City. Over? No, man, we're in Philly, yeah. 7 Victor. Whoa, November Juliet 7 Victor. What's going on, brother? Hey, making one right now, brother. Appreciate it. 73 QRZ KMRD parks on the air. November 6th, Lima Romeo Charlie. November 6th, Lima Romeo Charlie. Let's give you a 4x3, 43 in Texas. Hey, there's California. Rod is 5-3 in San Francisco Bay. Thanks for the contact. Appreciate it. Kilo Juliet 7, Bravo Juliet Sierra. You're uh, yeah, probably 5-6, five 56. Roger, Roger. I'll give you a 5-2, 5-2. Into Idaho, India Delta, India Delta. Kilo Echo 4, Zulu Uniform November. Kilo Echo 4, Zulu Uniform November. Quieting the whole uh, frequency here. You're 5-9 uh, plus, doing great. Hey, 5-9 into North Jeez. Carolina. Thank you so much. Uh, there she is, Kilo Oscar 4, Foxtrot Hotel, Sierra. I think you're about a 5x6 here in Texas. Roger, roger, 
Mike. Thanks for 5 by 6 I've got you 5 eight, five eight. Pretty good signal into Naples, Florida here, my friend. Getting ready for our friend, Mr. Ivan. Ian. 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 <laughs> hey, it's Don. What's going on, brother? <laughs> roger, roger. Uh, I'll give you a 2 1, 2 1, 21, 2 1, 2 1. Well, that was a heck of an activation. <laughs> Only called CQ a few times, and then just absolutely, uh, the contacts never stopped. We got all over the country. Uh, I mean, lots of like east of the Mississippi as per usual, but I'm surprised at the, at the number of contacts that I got uh, out west. You know, Idaho, California, uh, we got here one of the Dakotas, um, Nevada or somewhere, New Mexico, something like that. We'll look, you'll see it all on the map here. But uh, I'm quite surprised and uh, I, I've heard mixed reviews of this antenna some people say it, it, it it's kind of deaf not by the signal reports I was seeing man there was a lot of stations that were uh, most of the stations were over five by five there was there was a couple that were plus uh, 10 or 15 uh, as well there were some down in the noise but that's pretty typical so uh, I'm pretty impressed really I mean the only thing that I would have to say not so much negative, but <clears throat> because I have the Tar Heel, this is a little bit more wobbly, it seems, when I'm driving down the road. And this whip is uh, more whippy, <laughs> if, if you will. Uh, the Tar Heel, I mean, I, I drive fast. <laughs> it's not uncommon to see 100 mile per hour winds on these antennas. Um, so. That's about it, but I love the fact that the, the 891 just tunes it, it works. There are some hiccups, uh, like we saw earlier, but performance-wise, uh, this, this thing works. It gets out, so, uh, and it's one of the few screwdriver antennas that uh, are available right now, uh, I believe. There's, you got, you got, you got this, you got maybe a Scorpion antenna, maybe Diamond's antenna. I know you can't get a Tar Heel anymore. I don't know what's up with them. And uh, in all honesty, the 891 is like the only radio that's like mobile and new that's on the market right now. So it's, it's a pretty freaking great combo they got here. So um, I, I, would, I would recommend this. I'm gonna give this the KMRD seal of approval. So there you go. All right, guys, I can ramble on and on about antennas. Thanks so much for watching, I appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button, like it, share it, all that crap. Follow me on Twitter at K8MRD. Uh, leave some comments if you got, uh, if you have experience with this antenna. Let's keep the discussion going here. Let people know what you think of it, what your experiences are. And uh, hey, we'll catch you again on another episode of K8MRD Radio Stuff. 73, guys.